Welcome to Crashing Maya. I'm Alex, and today we will model a pattern and then uh, create a normal map uh, out of it that we can then assign to any other object or a plane and tile it. So let's get started with the pattern. I'm going to make like a just a simple herringbone pattern. So I'm going to start with a cube, snap it here, scale it to three. Then we'll need to add some divisions like this. So I Base there, extrude, and holding X, snap. Okay, so there's our pattern. So we'll add some detail to it to make it uh, nice and smooth. Snap, put the pivot down there so I can snap it to the grid and scale it down. I'm going to freeze and reset and delete history. Now let's add some bevels, holding shift and using the poly cut tool or cut faces tool. So when you get to an area like this, there's an easy way to clean this up. We're going to use the cut tool. We're going to go from the corner here to this one and then to this one. So I right click to get rid of it. If I double click this edge and this one and then this one and this one, I can then control delete. And now I have uh, less geometry, less bunching, and it's nice and clean, all quads. Let's add a loop down here as well, like that. Clear history, soften edge, and just clear history again. So this is the pattern we'll make, uh, and let's tile it. So to do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to move my pivot to here. Let's see where that is, okay. I'm going to duplicate control D and then holding V I'm going to drag it until I leave it where I want it which is right there and then I can press shift D and this will duplicate with transform like that so now now that we have this one pattern la uh, laid out we need to duplicate it in another direction so I'm going to select all of them press W for move tool hold D and hold V this will let me move the pivot here to all of them. So as you can see, all of them now have the same pivot. I'm going to duplicate, go to the move tool, and then move it. Uh, let's move it down here, and here. And then shift D, shift D, shift D, like that. So there's our pattern. I'm going to group this, center the pivot and place it on the grid like so. I want to move the pivot to where they intersect, so right there. And then I'm going to snap it to the grid again. So we have a nice square grid pattern. I'm going to make a plane. This will be uh, our target geometry. I'm going to scale it until I feel like it covers the correct amount. So what is that, 14? That should be good. That should be tileable enough. Oops. Got the 14 there. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to hide this for now. Uh, with this, uh, what we need to do is we need to subdivide it because the uh, tool we're going to use to make the normal map, uh, you have to have the geometry pretty well subdivided because it's not going to read the previous subdivision mesh. So I'm going to combine it, it just makes it easier to work with. And then I'm going to do a poly smooth. See if that gives me enough geo. Now you can still see the faces here like that, so I'm going to do it one more time. So basically just go into the inputs, set a subdivision of 2. That should be good enough. So this is the pattern we're going for. Let's unhide the plane. Now. What I like to do is name my objects so that I know what they are. I'm actually going to freeze this, modify freeze, and just move it close to the geometry here like that. So that should be good enough. So modify freeze and let's just reset. Clear history. Okay, so uh, the plane is the target. This is where we're going to uh, bake the texture to. And this is our ge source geometry, so this I'll call source. 
now uh, all we need to do is bring up the menu or the the window for the transfer maps uh, tool so hold spacebar go to lighting shading and find transfer maps uh, you'll have this little window will come up uh, make it larger there's some options we'll need to set so first thing you can go through and clear anything that's in here and if there's any other uh, output maps are assigned you can clear them as well and I'm going to select the source and click add selected now what I can do is hide the source um, because sometimes you're using a source that's really heavy you don't need to see it as long as it's in here and uh, the and naming it helps because now you can see it in the outliner uh, you just it just needs to be in there uh, Maya doesn't have to it doesn't have to be visible for Maya to do the operation I'm going to select the target click add and we'll make a normal map uh, let's see for the file format let's use a TIFF and tangent space use my all of that stuff Mat include materials we don't need and the next thing we'll do is click the folder icon and save it I'm gonna save it to the desktop uh, let's see map. save and then I'm gonna uh, s make sure it's assigned to a new shader and let's do the map width to the highest which is 4k uh, that's one of the limitations is uh, your map resolution is only 4k in Maya I wish it went up to 8k but oh well uh, the rest of this is not super necessary but we can actually um, if we unhide this for a sec I can show you what uh, this does so if I press 4 in here so this is our plane this is our geometry now uh, the, the target geometry you can go into the display options here and turn on both and uh, this will show you the envelope so you can see that um, basically this is how much is going to go out of the geometry uh, to search for uh, the source geometry so you can set it to uh, whatever you feel will be good enough to capture everything so it goes up and down so if you set it to uh, somewhere in the middle of our source geometry that's perfect so let's try three see how that is that should be good no, 2.5 maybe better yeah that should be good and then we can just leave it on mesh we don't need to see that now what will happen is your target will have this little target shape envelope you can just delete that it's not necessary to have after you set it okay so let's hide this again everything is set and let's hit bake uh, for sampling quality when you're first doing this set it to preview when you know it's working they can set for higher uh, quality uh, sampling quality I'm gonna leave it at 2 at low 2 by 2 and click bake so this is gonna take a little bit of time sometimes it's fast sometimes it's slow and uh, I'm gonna pause the video here uh, and then when we come back we'll be done okay we're back so it finished and uh, let's look let's minimize this and then let's look at our shading network I'm gonna grab that now if you double click here if you can't see the sample just double click the sample and it'll load and you can see there's a pattern it's hard to see there but I see it and you can see right there so let's uh, view it now to view the pattern you, we just need to press 6 and then in the renderer make sure you're either on viewport 2.0 or on uh, legacy high quality and there it is so our plane is still just a single plane you know if we try and deform it you know that's all it is but we now have a normal map that is based on our source pattern And they look pretty much the same. And it should be tileable. Let's double check. Yep, there it is. Well, almost tileable. <laughs> Have a little uh, break there. But, you know, if you take a little time, make sure the pattern works, uh, should be perfect. 
Uh, and you can use this with anything. You can make very complicated. Uh, you can model very complicated geometry, and then just create a simple normal map uh, to use. And when you render, it will render just like this. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them below. And uh, subscribe and like. Thank you.